Hello there, thank you for joining us for our second Kellett Live. My name is Helena Ison and I'm here today with Mark Steed, who's our principal and CEO here at Kellett. Now we're here in our new sixth form centre and if you'd like to see it for yourself, we do actually have an open evening coming up in October. So make sure you follow us on Facebook to find out more details about that. Now we're here today to talk about the last few years of schooling. So how do you tell if A-levels or the International Baccalaureate or IB are right for your child? And do remember, if you have any questions, please do write them in the comments section and we'll try our best to answer them at the end of the discussion. So Mark, I believe you've got plenty of experience in both systems. Yes, I, I, fortunately I ran the top IB school in the Middle East before I came to Kellett, which is of course one of the top A-level schools in the world. So it's, I've got a bit of an experience as both both as a school principal in terms of running them, uh, running different systems, but also as a parent. Um, so I had children go through the A-level system and my youngest went through the IB system. So I've been on the other side of it as well. Okay, perfect. Well, I think we might have some people watching who aren't familiar with the details of both systems. So perhaps we can have a rundown. So tell us about the IB. Okay, so the IB is is really an educational philosophy. It's not it's not so much a uh, an exam system. Um, it's it's an all encompassing view of education. Uh, the students study six uh, main subjects, um, th three subjects at higher level, three at standard level. They have to study mathematics, English, uh, a science, a humanity, um, and then uh, and they also have to study a language and then they have one free choice. And that free choice might be an art subject or it might be uh, one, of the other, one from one of the other categories. In addition to those six subjects, they also study the theory of knowledge, sometimes known by its sort of acronym TOC. Um, they study, uh, they write an extended essay um, and they also study CAS, which is a sort of community activity and service subject. So overall, uh, each of the academic subjects are worth um, seven or a maximum of seven uh, uh, points and the core, the other three subjects account for three so it's six seven to 42 plus three equals the 45 points and obviously in here in Hong Kong we have some amazing schools where you can get you know the highest number of students in Hong Kong who get 45 points um, so it's a, it's a really really strong option. Okay and what about A-levels? So A-level is a very different sort of approach. Um, with A-level, we've got, uh, you know, the, the core is to study three A-level subjects. Um, these are studied at a, in a much more intense way. Um, A-level has recently changed from a modular system where you had exams at the end of uh, year 12 and, and also at the end of year 13. It's now gone linear. So in nearly all subjects, in nearly all the A-level schools, they're, they're still yeah, they're now going for A levels at the end of the course. Um, so it's it's a there's a limited number of subjects, three um, compared to the IB. Um, it allows students to study um, specialised. There's no compulsory subjects at all, so you don't have to sort of study a language or maths or whatever. You can choose three subjects within the offering that the school has to offer. So here at Kellett, we have 23 A level subjects to choose from. Now, students might choose a broad, uh, a broad basket, so they might study mathematics, English, and um, biology, for example, or they might go for a, a narrower option of sort of doing maths, physics, and chemistry. Okay, great. And so what is the landscape like here in Hong Kong? Does one system predominate? I think it's it's the shift is it's, uh, the balance is shifting here in Hong Kong. I, I think it, there was a time when when it was a British system it was was far more common. I think a lot of schools have moved towards the IB system in recent years. So I think there are only two or three uh, A level schools left in Hong Kong. Um, uh, many schools now offer the IB curriculum, and of, obviously there are obviously other curricula as well available through some of the the sort of uh, specialist international schools. Great, and I think perhaps there might be some misperceptions among parents that one particular system would suit their child more than the other. What do you think about that? 
Well, I think if you, I think it depends on your child. I mean, if I mean, if I take my two youngest children who who went through very different systems, um, Jeremy, who was um, was very very academic, he was a, he was a scientist. Um, he he studied A levels and studied um, double mathematics, physics, and chemistry for A level, um, and that led him on to studying at Oxford where he read material science. Um, the level of mathematics in reading maths and further maths was a significantly higher level than you could get to in the IB program. It also, um, the nature of the, the, the studies suited him because he wanted to go and read hard sciences. Um, Carter, our youngest, um, Carter read the IB um, he did a broad basket. Um, you know, he it was probably good for him to be forced to learn a language, and probably good for him to be uh, sort of uh, forced to continue with his mathematics. Um, he's now reading psychology um, at Exeter University, and that sort of breadth, I think, was probably quite a good preparation for him. Uh, if he'd done A level, he wouldn't have chosen mathematics, for example. And, and now that he's studying psychology at university, there's quite a lot of statistics in the course. So it was probably quite good for him that he had to keep going with that. So I think it's, there, you know, there's no right and wrong answer here of which system's better. Um, but there are better fits, you know, for, for, for different children. Okay, I see. So I. I've heard that the IB is very time consuming. What do you think? Yeah, I think I come back to my point that the IB is really an educational philosophy. Um, it's, it's all consuming. Um, so the experience that we had as parents and the experience I had as a, a head teacher in, in Dubai where we were, we were offering the IB program was that the students really didn't have a lot of scope to go beyond or indeed need to go beyond. Um, you know, in the program of the IB, um, they were studying these six subjects that was very time consuming. Um, they were then having to do their, their CAS, their Community Ac uh, Activity Service Program. They were weren't writing the essay. It, it took all the time. Um, and I think that's, that's a strength in one sense and a weakness in another. Um, with an experience of an A-level student, I suppose if you just do three A-levels, you're going to have a lot of time. Um, so what we do at Kellett is that we, our view is that the, 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 the three A-levels are there to study and they are, they're there in some ways to really get to grips with them, get into some detail, really engage with those subjects and then they also become your ticket to university. But then beyond that we have a non-examined curriculum and I think that's, that's the importance of what we do at Kellett and why I think it works so well in that we are able to put on other aspects that aren't examined. Um, so for example, we have a sixth form mini MBA program. We have a, a wellbeing program, Positively Kellett, which is about equipping young people with the tools to cope with the stresses and strains of, 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 of university and work life that they're going to go into. Um, we also have a program where every student in, in year 12 uh, has public speaking lessons because that's going to be a very important part of what they do. And we also have dedicated time in the curriculum for them to uh, prepare for university applications, to have that counselling session around what they're going to do to go to university. So beyond that, so, so you've got the three A-levels and then you've got those, that broader curriculum, um, which also includes actually a subject called Critical Perspectives, which is sort of a lay and enables us to sort of give some real breadth to the curriculum without having to examine it. And then I think the real advantage is that talented students then have got a bit of time in the curriculum, in the, out, you know, outside the curriculum, but within the school day to really explore what they want to do. So what we find is that our very brightest students, the ones aspiring to sort of Oxbridge, Ivy League, selective universities, are doing university-style MOOCs. Um, they're studying beyond. So um, one student last year who, who's gone up to Oxford to read astrophysics did uh, a, 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 a number of university courses around cosmology and astrophysics. Bef and that she had the scope and capacity within her curriculum to actually do that so it was academically related we're able to extend students 
and and that's that's very good you know that allows us to to really push students and for them to specialize and to prepare for their university entry so they're very different as mm. you know in terms of their approach and the experience that um, students have is very very different as well and also a level varies from school to school i mean if you just did three a levels um a level would be a very narrow curriculum but i think what we do here at Kellett is we go beyond that and we, we take that opportunity to have these non-examined courses and extension work going on. Mm. I was wondering, if you were an IB student, would you have time to do sport at a high level? Well, you, you'd, have, you'd have to do some element of, uh, of exercise and, you know, within, within the programme mm. uh, for your IB. But you, if you're a dedicated sportsman or woman, you know, you, you, you're going to find the demands of the course quite quite high, um, and that perhaps isn't that opportunity to develop other areas in the same way. Um, and it it might be that the school can provide some of that and fits it around the program. But uh, my experience as a school principal of an IB school was that the students really ended up focusing on what they were doing. Um, there was not the capacity to to sort of take time off to be and do a school play or, or do those other activities because it was just so demanding. Mm, okay. So going back a few years, I was wondering, why do most IB schools do GCSEs? I, I think GCSE has a, has a rigour that the middle years programme doesn't have. And um, there's no coincidence that, um, that the, the top IB schools in the world tend to do GCSE as the preparation for it because GCSE is a, is a relatively um, rigorous program in terms of uh, providing academic standards that are accountable through uh, external examinations. Now the IB has only recently brought testing in at the, the end of the middle years program and it really sits out of kilter with the IB philosophy, which is around student-centred learning and students exploring and developing their own way of, uh, of, of studying. Now, that balance between rigour and uh, student-centred learning it isn't, I, in my opinion, isn't very well resolved within the middle years programme. And, and so the, the top academic school, the more academic schools tend to move towards the GCSE as a preparation for, for the wider IB. Um, and, and, that's, uh, and that's a very, uh, that's very understandable because the, 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 you know, the, the GCSE is, is GCSE is a fairly difficult exam to, you know, for, an eight, uh, for a 16 year old and there aren't that many equivalents around the world. Um, there are some but there aren't many. Um, so it's a very good preparation. For, uh, for going into the demands of the IB programme. Certainly students who, who come off the back of a middle years programme into an IB diploma programme uh, aren't used to that rigorous examination and accountability that, that comes with the diploma. Okay, great. So moving on to universities, do you think there are some courses where one curriculum is better suited than the other? Yes, I, I, I think... If you're if you're looking to read hard sciences, um, by which I mean sort of you know, sort of physics and sort of mathematics, I suppose, and engineering and those sorts of things, there is no doubt that the specialism of A level provides a better base going into those subjects um, because you learn more mathematics um, and also the nature of the mathematics is different. So. Um, the, the higher modules within um, the IB programme are based around statistics, um, whereas A-level mathematics can be based around statistics or mechanics, and more often it's around mechanics. So in terms of going to read something like engineering, A-level will take you to a higher level than, um, than the, the, uh, the higher IB programme. Now, IB have tried to respond to this by the, the IBO have responded to this by recently introducing sort of higher level, you know, sort of further mathematics type options within within the IB program. Um, but the you know historically where 
what most students will do is to study higher level or standard level mathematics and that's nowhere near the level that further mathematics would get you to and actually if you look at the statistics of you know who's reading um, engineering or, or, or physics or those sorts of hard sciences at top institutions in the UK they tend to be coming off A-level programs rather than IB. Um, obviously going to America is a very different matter because the IB sits in you know is in a sense much more uh, sort of aligned with the American system anyway at the sort of broader base in, 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 in the high school years um, and so what we did with our, our scientists at Jess is they tended to go to the States. Um, okay. We wouldn't have pushed them towards Oxbridge. They, you know, they would go to the, the top institutions. Great. We've got lots of questions coming through, actually. Okay. We've got a question from Julie talking about universities. Julie says, we are hoping to send our children to the US for university. Would they be at a disadvantage if they go with the A-level program? No, I, I think this is an area that... Um, it's perhaps a really good opportunity to clear up. I mean, the, the, it's very easy for uh, the students to, to progress to American universities off the back of A-level. I think the important thing is that they've got that ability to, to create some breadth in their program in addition to the A-level, their, their, their core three A-levels. Um, but we, we actually at Kellett have a, a specialist team around university applications coming off the back of A-level. and. That's increasingly common from the in the UK that uh, UK uh, schools are sending students to America. So it's it's a pathway that's becoming much more common. And certainly here in Hong Kong, obviously we face both directions, looking towards you know UK and Europe and and to the states, and and so it's a very important part of what we're doing here. So around 20% of our leavers last year from Kellett went to American universities. So. That's, that's a pretty good number, and I think that that program, that will increase with momentum as time goes on. I would assume now that university entrance teams everywhere in the world would be familiar with both systems. Do you think that's fair? Yes, I think that there was a time when the IB program wasn't really understood by British universities, and now that, that has become much more common. Um, the university admissions tutors are familiar with it and I think that's sort of mirrored if you like with what's going on in America where they're becoming much more familiar with, with A-level mm. programs. Okay, now we've got a question from Nicola. Which system do you think is more readily accepted by UK universities, particularly Oxford and Cambridge? I think I mean, I think that, that these these universities are getting used, and the UK universities are getting used to the IB, but they are really, you know, the default from, you know, nearly every state school in the UK, for example, you know, is, is running A-level programme. Um, that is the default for for UK applications. So it's, it, it, it's very easy for a school like Kellett to explain, you know, and... Um, fit into the application process for for sort of Oxbridge and sort of top Russell Group universities. The, again, it comes down, I think the advantage that going to those sort of elite universities is that we're coming off A-level where you've got specialist details, you know, you've spent more time doing English literature if you're going to, if you're going to apply to read English than you would off the IB. You're going to have spent much more time doing mathematics than you would especially if you do further mathematics going in so and universities really you know want that breadth of, of knowledge now it's not to say they won't get in off the IB they obviously do but it, it's it, it's that students have specialized and I suppose the the British system is a specialist university system and you know we specialize quite young within the British system and, and that is reflected by a level and now there are some subjects. I mean, I read theology at university, and and that's a real jack of all trades subject. So, um, you know, that would lend itself ideally to to an IB program where you've you know I had to study languages, I had to study literature, I had to study history, I had to study uh, the, you know the history and philosophy of science and all these sorts of things. So all of these that breadth it really lends itself to it. So I think it slightly depends on what you're going to study. And as I say, if you're going to read hard sciences, then I think you know it's it. 
although it's possible to do it off an IB, it's much, much easier off, off an A-level programme. Okay, great. So we've got a question from Sandra. For A-levels, will there be much coursework which is counted to the final grade, or is it purely exam-based? So uh, coursework's pretty much gone from A-level, except in the creative subjects, where we've still got it in, in, in subjects like the sort of... Um, design technology, computer science, media, and so on. Um, but for, for subjects like English and so on, it, it's, it's, not, it, it's moved back towards a sort of linear examination-based model. Um, what we actually do at um, Kellett's, though, is that we do modular mathematics. So um, A-level mathematics is, can still be done in a modular way. So we, we still have students taking maths modules at the end of year 12, um, I think this is a huge advantage. This isn't possible in the UK anymore. Um, it's still possible within the international community. So we're, we've done this in order to give uh, students an advantage, really a competitive advantage, because they can go into a university application, to a top university, with very high module marks in a way that UK students used to be able to do, but uh, can no longer do. So um, we're, in a sense, trying to position our students best in order to do that. Okay, and what about IB, is that as exam based as well? So um, the IB has got the extended essay along the way, um, and um, in the same way actually with A-level we have the extended project qualification uh, as part of what we do at, at Kellett as well. So that in the sense those two are very similar, where they do an extended project, an extended essay, um, a university style piece of work so both systems have have that um, there is an element of ongoing work around the IB but it, it really again falls to being an exam at the end uh, that becomes a, a key component of the whole thing so it is I, I think you know this is really an opportunity I suppose to talk a little bit about you know the pressures that young people are under these days I mean I think that the the level of university offers, the grade inflation, we talk about grade inflation in exams, but we also need to talk about grade inflation in terms of university offers, that young people are under a lot of pressure. Um, you know, I mean I, I mean, I applied before the ARC, but you know, when I, I mean, you know, I think my, I, I mean, my offer was like, you know, two C's, you know, to go to St Andrews if I hadn't got into Cambridge. So, you know, it was, you know, you don't get into St Andrews on two C's anymore. You go, you know, you probably need an A star and two A's. So there's been enormous grade inflation around, you know, and pressures on young people. So there's no latitude around this. And they do feel that. And I think that mm. parents need to be supported through that. Mm. Okay. A question from Martin. How do you approach entry to the highly selective elite universities? Is there a program designed around this? I, I, I think Martin must be talking about what we offer here at Keller. Yes, I mean, yeah, I, I think that to get into the sort of highly selective universities in the world, whether that's Oxbridge, Ivy League, or, or to be honest, I mean, some of the top end Russell groups, I mean, if you try to get into Imperial, you know, to read, you know, read engineering or something, um, you really need to head up, you know, put together uh, a portfolio of educational experiences and knowledge over a period of time in order to present the application process. So we work with students um, throughout the sixth form putting that, that work together. Um, we are working at putting that, bringing that program lower down the school. So we have a scholars program lower down the school where we're, we're trying to sort of develop that. What's interesting now is that top universities are doing their own testing. So Oxford and Cambridge effectively are now doing their own entrance exams again in October. So that aspect is putting new challenges in. So Would that be for every course. Uh, there are yes, there are sort of essentially aptitude tests for for pretty much all the courses now. Um, and so we obviously do some preparation work around around those. I think the challenge with young people is, um, in terms of getting, on, you know, particularly around Oxbridge applications, preparing them for those exams, is they need to come to a landing pretty early on about what they want to study. Mm -hmm. uh, the earlier they come to that landing, the better we can prepare them specifically for those aptitude tests and assessments. So that, that is, I think, the challenge. So if somebody makes a very late decision on what they actually want to read at university, that, that doesn't give us as much time as the, 
the student who's sort of somewhere in the middle of year 11 sort of says, well, actually, I really want to go and read medicine or I really want to be an engineer. Mm, okay. We are getting quite a lot of questions about university entrance. So we did on our previous Kellett Live talk about how to get into highly selective universities. So you can always look at that video if you like. So we've also got a question about medicine. If your child was very keen to pursue medicine, do you think one curriculum is better than the other? Well, you clearly can get in to read medicine off both programmes, and you know that, that's sort of common around the world. But again, you're going to learn more biology, more chemistry, more maths, more physics by doing an A-level course than you are by doing the IB programme. Um, and the other thing with, with, with the IB programme is that, that there's a, ultimately you can only read two sciences and mathematics even if you use that sixth option to, to study a science. Whereas it is possible you know, to go through uh, and study three, three separate sciences. So you could, you know, with the A-level system, you can re read biology, chemistry, and physics if you want to, which is obviously quite a good pathway into um, reading um, uh, medicine at university. Or, or you might do sort of biology, chemistry, psychology, for example. I mean, that, that, that's quite a good combination as well. But again, it's... it's, 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 it's the ability to specialise earlier and it's the ability to study to a greater level of depth that is the advantage of A-level over IB at this stage. Okay, great. I know you said that your children are past this stage, but how? what advice would you give parents about making this decision with their children? Like how, how did you work out with your child what was best to do? I suppose I suppose my children didn't have a choice because they went to the school okay. I was in. Okay. <laughs> so, so it was always uh, it was never really that. a problem. But I, I think if you I mean you, you're you're very fortunate here in Hong Kong in that you know, you've got some some of the very best A level schools in the world and you've got some of the very best IB schools. So you've got a fantastic choice. So there's a sense in which you can't can't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and people around the world don't have those choices. I mean you know we are very fortunate in in Hong Kong to have have that choice of provision. So within that, I think it, it's really about sitting down and the, the factors for a child are how motivated they are, how structured a program do they need, will they go beyond the curriculum and you take the opportunities that something like an A-level program provides or, or do they sort of need to be nailed to the floor in the way that the IB does. IB doesn't give them a lot of room for manoeuvre. They have to pass all six subjects. They have to do well on all six subjects to get into a good university. So, so the pressure is, is, and is built into the structure. With the A-level students, so if you've got someone who, who needs that structure, then you know, the A-level the one might be a bit, a bit fluid for them, um, whereas the IB will, will provide that structure. It will fill their time, whereas the, the A-level structure allows a student to go beyond so if you're st if you've got someone who's absolutely passionate about astrophysics, then 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 the A level structure allows them to do it. It give, will give them the scope to go beyond and to study beyond. So I think that's one factor. And also I th I think again it comes down to I would feel much more confident if my you know when my child applied you know when Jeremy applied to Oxford to to read material science you know I was confident coming off a double maths physics chemistry package that he was going to do it. And I don't think there were anybody on his course that, read, that had read IB, because it's a very engineering-based science, heavy science subject. Whereas, whereas if you're going to read a humanity or, or theology or whatever, then those sorts of subjects will lend themselves much more to, to, the, to the breadth. Um, you know, the, the IB can provide a, a real, real breadth there. I think it, it really is horses for courses, and that's sort of partly why we're doing today to, mm. to sort of you know say, well, look, these are the these are the students for whom you know the A level program might work well. These are the sort of students for whom you know the IB program might work. Did you do okay, Jeremy? Jeremy did okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. A question from Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. How difficult is it to, transi to transition from the British system to IB given their differences? Um, I, I think it's an easier transition to go to the, to, you know, from the British system into IB than it is to go from IB middle years into into um, into A level, um, because there's so much more rigor around the British system and it's easier to, and that's continued through. 
Um, going from the British system into the IB um, works quite well from GCSE because as long as in the GCSE program, you know, you're studying typically 10 subjects, you're having to study maths, English, science and a language anyway. So the structure of GCSE is not that dissimilar to the structure of the IB where you've got a range of compulsory subjects and then a couple of options off it. So I think going from GCSE into IB is okay. I think coming out of middle years, um, particularly if it's a middle years program where there isn't a lot of rigor and it's very child-centered, um, it, it depends on the child, the, 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 whether they've got the, the, the core in place, the, the real building blocks of mathematics and science in order to develop, that the become the issue. Okay, great. So a question from Nicole, this is on one of your favorite subjects. How is Kellett preparing students for the jobs of the future? Okay, um, so I think one of the interesting challenges we have in education is that there is a huge dislocation between what's typically going on in schools and what's going on in universities and where the world of work is. Um, my generation went through, we went through school, so parents' generations tend to go through, they, they did school, they, they got their A-levels, or you know, it was probably A-levels in those days, then went through and did their degree, and that was effectively their ticket into a, a good job, probably in the professions and so on. And, and that, that sort of all worked rather nicely. Um, the, the fact is that that isn't how it works anymore. Most employers these days are not using uh, qualifications as a proxy for employability anymore. So, you know, just having a degree doesn't mean that you're employable. So, it, so what's happening is that employers are now doing their own testing. Um, they're doing aptitude tests, they're putting people into team situations, they're giving them, they're testing for different skills, the skills that they need in the workplace. And those aren't the skills that are being taught typically on an IB or an A-level course. So what we're trying to do here at Kellett is to fill that gap in. So things like the mini MBA, things like our innovation program, which we're doing lower down the school, where we've got people working collaboratively, um, people are working in teams to solve problems. Um, these, this form of education, I think, is really important. So you, you, we're in a sort of transition at the moment between a sort of old school model of getting your ticket to university and a ticket into a good job, and then also trying to teach the, the, the broader skills. So one of the things I like about having A-level is that we've got time with sixth formers to give them some public speaking lessons or to do run a mini MBA program or to, to, to actually talk about what well-being looks like in, in the mid-21st century and to equip them with some tools to be able to do that. And I think that th this is also preparing them for a world of work that might be very different too, where there may be fewer jobs available for professionals. Um, the, the world has become globalized, people are moving around. And, and to some extent, our students here in Hong Kong are very, very well prepared for that. You know, this is a global city and it's a great place to be educated, not only because we've got great schools, but because it's a cosmopolitan city. It's a very outward looking place. It's not, it's not parochial, it's, not, it, it, it's, it's definitely a, a place in the world that sort of well normally we can bounce <laughs> we, can, ba we can bounce around Asia very easily and and interact and it's sort of where it west east week meets west and always has been so I think you know in that sense it's a really good place to you know to have children at school okay great we've talked about this a little bit before but let's just sort of spell it out do you think there are any particular characteristics in students that would better suit one curriculum over the other I, I think the the element of um, I, I think when students know what they want to do, the biggest you know, as parents, you you probably want to know what's going to make my child successful, and and you know, from whatever it is now, thirty five years of experience and twenty years in headship, I think the child that knows what they want to do at an early stage is always going to get further than the child who doesn't, and I think that. And, it, and, and it's no good you as a parent sort of imposing that on your child. So, but giving children experiences that, that fire their imagination and drive what they want to do in life 
I think, is, is really the challenge of parenting and it's the challenge of, of education is, is, can you light that fire? And I think you know, a child that knows at an early stage that they want to be an engineer or that they know that they want to be a doctor and, and so on, um, those, those children are much easier to, to, to push in the right direction and, and support. And, and the challenge is that, that that world is changing. So, I mean, I think the interesting thing is that some, a subject like media studies, for example, gets a really bad rep from, you know, sort of you know, traditional academics. But, you know, the world of creativity, um, the world of being able to um, manage visual images, being visually literate, being creative, is probably a, a, a really significant skill that's going to be useful going forward in terms of how, um, you know, here we are doing a Facebook Live, you know, it, it, there's a technical aspect to how we're, we're delivering this. We've got a technical team, you know, working with us. Um, that's much more common. So I, th I, I think there, there is a changing landscape of which subjects are, are going to have currency in, in, in the mid 21st century. And I think that those of us who had very traditional sort of educations, um, yeah, that I, I think sometimes find that quite difficult, you know, that mm. our children are sort of looking to go off and, you know, want to do, you know, pursue different careers. But that's also very important that we encourage that creativity and don't sort of try and stifle them into what we were and what worked for us. Yeah, the world has changed. It has. Okay, great. Well, still with... Um, how to choose subjects, I guess. Goran has asked, thank you, Goran. How does Kellett support students and families in their pathway selection and future studies specialization? When is this support introduced and how? So the key, the key at Kellett is that we have a house system that runs through the school. So they join the school in the senior school in year seven and they will be in that house all the way through the school. So the, the, the tutor, uh, who looks after a, a small group of students will follow them up through the school. Um, and that relationship between their tutor and their, the, the student is, is absolutely key. And we create touch points in the week where the, where the teacher can meet with that student and, and help them. And so that teacher would be involved in first choosing their, perhaps their language options in year eight and what they're going to do going into year nine or it might be in year nine choosing what GCSEs they're going to do or, or in year 11 choosing which A-levels they're going to do and through that by having sort of trained adults who are in in the school community who understand how the system works we're able to to develop um, and work with young people and find where their strengths are and, and then provide that guidance. And I think that it's that continuity of pastoral care and uh, sort of guidance that is, that is absolutely key. And then alongside that, we've, you know, we've got a lot of experts in different areas, and particularly around university entrance and, uh, and applications. So when a student gets into year 12, you know, they're, they're, they've chosen their three A-levels, they're working on what they're doing, and we, at that point, then, will really start honing in on where they're going to go to university and how they're going to get there. Okay, great. And a question from Shobhana. I hope I've said that right. What about schools that provide a combination of GCC and then IB? Would that be better than purely one system or the other, I guess? Well, it's probably already come through. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a great fan of the middle years programme. But I think, you know, I mean, it can be done well, but it rarely is. And I think that there isn't the rigour to it and structure to it. And I think... Te teens, you know, when you're in, you know, 14, 15 year old, 16 year old children need need a lot of structure. You know, that's an age where, the, you know, they really are going through a lot of changes. They're sort of becoming young adults. They're trying stuff out. They test the boundaries and stuff. And I think having a rigorous structure at that point, I think, is is really good. So I would, I would always go for a GCSE into whether it's IB or A-level, but certainly I, I would always go for a GCSE program over a middle years program um, because I think it provides really good structure and rigour. And although there are, you know, they've got exams and all the stress that goes with that, I think that's actually quite good for young people. I think it's actually, you know, it, it's a sort of wake-up call. You know, I think young people, when they sit their GCSE mocks and, you know, um, 
you know in January of their of their year eleven, I think it's a real wake up call. They, you know, the real world is coming. You know, and you know, and I think they sort of need that. Schools have got to do that. And I think I, I don't know how you do that. You know, if you if if there isn't that rigor and structure around. Okay, we've talked about this a little bit again, but let's just answer it from a question from Angie. Thank you, Angie. If my children can't decide what to study in university until the end of like year or ten or eleven. How would you advise them to choose their A-level subjects? Well, I once, I once had a boy in my boarding house um, who was incredibly bright, and he couldn't decide what to do. And he ended up doing an A-level combination of uh, chemistry, mathematics, and Greek, um, and ended up going to, actually, he still couldn't decide, and actually went to Oxford and read, um, uh, read uh, uh, philosophy and, um, and physics. Um, so uh, yeah, so he, he did uh, philosophy and mathematics. Um, so I mean, he. Um, but I, I think there are. You can't go wrong at GCSE um, uh, in terms of the core. You make gets you over the line. Um, chemistry is a good subject to study at A level because it. If you're going to uh, or do it you know, within your IB program because chemi if you don't have chemistry, it closes things down. So I would always always go for that. Maths is always quite handy if you can't choose, and then I think you've got a free choice of. Um, but I think you've really got to, you know, I think good schools will get, you know, hopefully like the passion. There'll be, a t you know, the the aim as a head is you want teachers to be, you know, to to be inspiring and to actually sort of give people a taste of what it's like to study. You know, you know, they, you know, they should be so passionate about being a historian or a geographer or a physicist that they actually inspire young people now that's what I you know I that's what I look for when I employ teachers um, and I definitely would hope that to happen but there are certainly safe combinations that don't close down too many options after that. what did that student end up doing do you know uh, I think it's the university lecturer <laughs> there you go yeah. all right we've got a final question from Mark so would Kellett ever consider expanding to have both the IB and A levels on offer? I don't think we will, and I, I think it's really that you you need to have a very big sixth form in order to run both. I mean, you need probably something in the region of 100, 120 students in each year group to make to make it really viable. Um, and I think one of the things that we we like about Kellett is that you know we've got we've got year groups of sort of 70, 80 in the sixth form. Um, it that gives us the ability to have 23 A-level subjects. So we've got a lot of choice, a lot of breadth around that, um, lots of combinations there. Um, and I, I I I do think that you know if I have to come off the fence having run both systems, I think a school that's got the freedom. To, to do the other stuff. I think it's great that every student leaves here having done a wellbeing course and that everybody, every student leaves here uh, having, um, you know, having done a mini M MBA and so on. Now, these are really important you know, things that we're preparing them for life and I wouldn't have time to do that if, you know, if I was you know, running an IB school. Okay, well you've been very balanced about both curriculums but um, if you had to bat for Kellett, how would you persuade people that A levels and Kelly is the right option for your child? Okay, so I, I think I think you can you can get the best of both worlds through the A level system. If you want to do a, have breadth, you can you can have that by the choice of A level subjects that you do. I mean, you can read maths, chemistry, and physics, uh, maths, chemistry, and history. Um, those sorts of combinations that you know are really quite quite handy to be able to do. In practice, people don't. In practice, the young people who come to Kellett specialise, and then that gives them, I think, a competitive advantage applying to top universities in the world because they've studied at a, at a higher level. Um, they've been able to they've been able to go beyond the A level curriculum by because uh, they've got time to do so. And also, we've been able to create the breadth, but we haven't you know we haven't had to examine it. You know, we've actually been able to put all these other aspects in. I think that combination. You know, I, I've really enjoyed working with the team here, putting a new sixth form program together because I think we've got a very exciting sixth form offering, and um, and I and I think the students are really enjoying it, and and it's great now that we've actually got the the sixth form centre, um, which we're opening this evening, um, to you know 
to enable the students to have the, the learning environment that they really need. Okay, great. Well, as I mentioned before, Keller is hosting an open evening in October. We've posted details in the comments on the Facebook chat, or you can go to our website if you'd like to know more. So we run out of time for today. If there's any particular topics you'd like us to discuss at future Kellett Lives, do let us know. You can email us at communications at kellettschool.com. Uh, so thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.